Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how you can use knots to make the most secure form of money possible, called quantum money. In order to show you what I mean, first we have to define what a knot is. For example, you can see this extension cord here is knotted around this bar, so that if I try to pull it, it cannot come out. The gap underneath is too small for the head of the cord to go underneath, and it's wrapped around right here, so it's completely stuck, I can't pull it off. So the question is, how can I remove this cord? Well, actually, this isn't as stuck as you would think. Watch what I can do to remove it. Just slide this under here, and it comes off. So sometimes what we think is a knot actually isn't. Stick this under, put this through here. In mathematics, a knot is a string that forms a closed loop. So if your ends don't meet, it's not a knot. The simplest form of a knot is called an unknot. This is just a simple ring. Now you can arrange an unknot in different ways so that it has different numbers of crossings. For example, if I just have it in the shape of a ring, it has zero crossings. But I can twist it like this so that it has one crossing. So even though they have different numbers of crossings, they're still the same knot. Now you can have a different knot than the unknot like this one called the trefoil knot. You can see that no matter how we try to untangle this knot, it can never be the same knot as the unknot. These two knots are different knots. So how many different types of knots are there? Well, this question was actually first asked by Lord Kelvin. Yes, this is the same guy that we named the temperature units of Kelvin after. Now before the theory of atoms was solidified, he came up with a theory called the vortex theory of atoms. He was curious why there were only relatively few types of atoms, and he proposed that atoms were actually vortexes in the ether. Now back then they thought there was a substance called ether that permeated all of space, and it was the medium in which everything propagated. So Lord Kelvin proposed that atoms were actually different types of knots in the vortexes in this ether. For example, hydrogen was the simplest knot, called the unknot, and then carbon was the trefoil knot. This theory was eventually proven to be wrong, but it actually led to the way that modern knot theory is done today. But why would there be an entire field dedicated to knots? Well, it turns out to be very useful in figuring out how long chains like molecules and DNA can be coiled and uncoiled efficiently in the body. But also, knot theory can be very helpful in cybersecurity. Remember how I mentioned that the unknot can be twisted and shaped different ways so that it doesn't look like an unknot? So if you just have two tangled loops, there's no known computational method to know if these are two unknots or an unknot and a trefoil knot, for example. And it might just be that this isn't just something we don't know how to do, but it may be that this is something that cannot be solved. So how can we use this cool property of knots to help with security? Well, scientists and mathematicians have been trying to come up with a way to make currency that's non-copyable, non-counterfeitable. One way that you can do this is by making quantum money. Now quantum money has serial numbers that are associated with an arbitrary quantum state. This could be the polarization states of photons, for example. If a counterfeiter tries to make a copy of the quantum money and the quantum states, then it changes the states altogether so you know it's counterfeit. So the bank can tell if the money's been copied. But one of the problems with this method is that the bank always has to check the money to see if it's copied. The merchant can't check it without being given the information needed in which they could also make counterfeit money. Now this is where the knot theory comes into play. Remember how I said that there's no known way to know if two knots are the same knot? Well that's not exactly true. They have a specific property called an Alexander polynomial. And two knots that are the same will have the same Alexander polynomial. But two of the same Alexander polynomials don't always equal the same knot. So you can actually input knot diagrams into the quantum states of the quantum money, and if the money is legitimate, then the merchant can verify it, it's legitimate without actually knowing the solution to the grid diagram. And the money is completely non-counterfeitable, but it can be verified by third parties. Now we've glossed over one of the most important problems here. All of this requires that instead of using regular computers, we're using quantum computers to check quantum states. And right now, even though quantum computers do exist, they're not widespread, and there are a lot of problems keeping them from being used mainstream yet. But who knows what the future holds? If quantum computers get more powerful, it may be that we can make the most secure money possible using knots. 
And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, or hit the bell so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out theactionlab.com where I sell Action Lab gear. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.